So in this tutorial, I'm going to go through how to edit images in Adobe Lightroom Mobile. So this is basically the same application that's on um, the iPhone, the iPad, um, the I Android phones. Um, the great thing about Lightroom is it's consistent across um, all the different uh, platforms. And um, although some of the controls in different places in this, they're very similar to what they are on the desktop versions. Um, and whether you've got them on a, a tablet or a phone or, or, or whatever. Um, and that's one of the great things about this, so that, that kind of the skills that you have in one place are transferable to, to another. So um, I'm just going to go through my kind of um, editing process, if you like. So the first place that I'm going to is Light. This is basically the same process that um, I use on the desktop version. And the previous uh, tutorial that I did was using exactly the same image, but just in the desktop version of Lightroom, just to show you how transferable that, that kind of knowledge from, from one platform to another is. So one first thing I'm going to do is I want to reduce the, the histogram that we've got here, reduce the contrast of the image. So the histogram is great. We've got lots of detail in there. This is a raw image off camera, so we know that there's a, you know, a huge range of tones in there. What I'm going to do is just slide the highlights slider to the left, and that's just going to um, bring back some more detail into the highlight areas. On this image in particular, it's just kind of in the droplets of water. There's some, some real kind of bright highlights there. And then I'm going to just move the shadow slider to, to the right, and that's just going to bring detail into the shadows there. And what this is doing is just kind of reducing con the contrast of the whole image. So the difference between the highlights and the shadows, it's reducing everything. So we've got a, quite a, a flat gray image. And this gives us a really great place to start from in terms of editing the image. So I've just tweaked the exposure a little bit there as well, just to kind of um, reduce again those highlights a bit. We've got, as you can see, we've still got massive amounts of detail and massive amounts of room for, for movement. So next, I would I can either do this through contrast. So I want to increase the contrast of the image. So I can use contrast here like this, just slide this, and you'll see the in the histogram there that the the um, the the left and right hand edges of that are moving further out. So the, you can see how the contrast is increasing on that. Um, and I'm quite happy with that, but I actually prefer to use prefer to use curves, which is at the top of the dialog box at the bottom there, just in that little kind of button. Um, and this brings up the kind of the curve um, overlay there. So what I'm going to do is what we call an S curve. And basically, if you touch on this line anywhere, it'll just it'll create a, a handle for you to move things. And I'm just going to bring down the, the curve on that left hand side there. And that's just going to increase the shadow areas. And basically, the steeper that this line is, the higher the contrast. And then I'm going to just touch that right hand side there and just push that up. And that's increasing our highlights. You can actually see the way that the histogram is moving. Um, it's rising because of the increase in saturation of the colors as we increase the contrast. Um, it's moving out to the right because of the increase in the highlight areas as we brighten it up. And you can see this, the, the contrast has improved over the whole image and now the the, the curve of the histogram is quite quite steep. I'm just going to click on done, um, and you know as we go, and we'll keep just keep keep tweaking little little bits here and there. So I'm just going to tweak the exposure again. I'm just going to tweak the exposure again. Just move that ever slightly down. I want quite a dark moody image here, and then I'm going to go down to let's have a look at color. So I don't think color needs to be changed a great deal, just maybe up the vibrance or the saturation a little bit. Um, you can see saturation, so vibrance is quite subtle. If you're using it with skin tones, it doesn't affect the skin tones in the image. So if you're using it for a port rate or something, it does everything but the skin tones. Saturation on the other hand increases the brightness of everything. This can be quite, um, quite extreme actually quite quickly as you just move that slider. So I, I, generally use a vibrance just to bring in an extra little bit of color in there. Um, the color balance overall is great. There's just lovely greens and yellows and blues in there and, and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm not really going to adjust anything else on, on the color side of things. And then I'm just going to go over to the effects um, kind of dialogue here. 
I'm just going to increase the clarity just ever so slightly. And what this is doing is basically sharpening the edges of of the um, the parts of the image. So the edges, those, those leaves, it's just sharpening up the definition there and on the textured areas. Um, if we would use texture, texture just adjusts the very fine detail. So kind of like the water droplets and things like that. Dehaze, it's good for images of like foggy landscapes and stuff. It does reduce the haze or, you know, when that you've got that kind of yellowish haze on a blue sky in the summer. It's good for that. These things can become quite extreme quite quickly. So you've just got to kind of just do it a little bit at a time. I'm just going to scroll down to vignette here. So vignette is like darkening the edges or lightening the edges of the image. So I'm just going to just give these a little bit of a move to the left. And you can see now that the, the histogram was starting to lose some detail in the shadow areas. The histogram is just dropping off the left there. Um, but that's all right. I want something that's quite moody. I can bring back a bit of the um, the detail in those, those shadows there. I'm just maybe just tweak just the black there just to bring back that. And actually, I'm very happy with that image as it is. What I've done, I've just I've stayed away from using um, some of the more complex um, parts of Lightroom, such as masking, because um, I just wanted to show you um, what you could achieve just using the, the free version of Lightroom Mobile. And you can see that this has actually come out really quite nicely in, in here. Um, I'm just going to kind of do a couple more things. So I just want to show using um, kind of uh, black and white. So if we go to color and I'll just scroll down and you'll see there's a black and white button there. If I press black and white, now that we've lost that color, we've kind of lost some of the, the contrast in there. So obviously we can go to the light area and just kind of ch move some of these to increase the contrast a, a bit more. Um, under effects, uh, clarity on a black and white image is nowhere near as extreme as it is on a color image. It actually can, can really add a, a um, definition to kind of um, the, the different tones in the image. And um, I'm just going to go back to color. So if we go to color mix, and you say in black and white, in, if we were using film, would use different colored filters and that would correspond with these here. Now, if um, if you imagine we've got a lot of green and we've got a lot of yellow in this image. So if I select the green there and just move this slider, you can see how those tones change. This is just where the green areas of the image are. The same with the yellow. If I move the yellow, you can see it's just affecting the yellow areas. And I would say there's probably some blue in there. Yeah, so you can see how that's affecting that as well. So this gives us massive control over the different tonal areas of the image when we're doing something, uh, when we're editing in black and white. So then I'm just going to click done. And then slightly differently in this to what it is on the desktop versions, we now go to share in the top right. And then we can kind of save the device to the image or, or share or edit. So I'm just going to click on save to device and this will export the full size image. OK, I hope that's been helpful. Uh, subscribe, follow me and um, have a look at some of my other videos. Thank you very much.